The RCRC assumes various functions in order to alleviate the suffering of victims of armed conflicts. IHL treaties provide three different legal bases for performing such functions. The first specifically allows the RCRC to perform particular missions. For example, under the IHL norms applicable in international armed conflict, the RCRC is specifically allowed to access prisoners of wars and other protected persons. This is actually one of the core activities carried out by the RCRC. The RCRC must be permitted to visit all places where prisoners of war may be held. And with respect to civilians, the RCRC must be allowed to visit not only the places where civilians are interned or detained, but also any civilian in the national territory of a state or in the territories under belligerent occupation. This right pursues different purposes. To assess the humanitarian need of the protected person, to monitor compliance with IHL in connection with their treatment, and in case of deprivation of liberty, to verify that such deprivation conforms to IHL. In order to carry out this task, the RCRC must be allowed to interview the prisoners of war, and in particular, the prisoners' representatives, as well as any other protected person, without any other witnesses being present. The RCRC delegates must have full liberty to select the places they wish to visit, as well as the duration and frequency of these visits. The visits may only be prohibited for reasons of imperative military necessity, and then only as an exceptional and temporary measure. Another specific function, which is specifically delegated to the RCRC by IHL treaties, and also constitutes one of its major activities, is related to the management of the Central Tracing Agency. The main function of the Central Tracing Agency is to collect information that might help to identify persons in particular need of protection and to restore their links to their family. It may also arrange the exchange of family correspondence, the transfer and repatriation of individuals, as well as the reunification of families. When functions such as access to prisoners of war and other protected persons are specifically recognized by the RCRC. The RCRC does not need the consent of the states in order to operate. However, in practice, it seeks the consent of the parties. Besides those specific attributions, the RCRC may also perform an open-ended range of, of functions on the basis of its broad right of initiative. This right of initiative exists both in international and non-international armed conflicts. It allows the RCRC to carry out any humanitarian activity in favor of the victims of the conflicts. But they are subject to the consent of the parties to the conflict. Any humanitarian activity means any activity that the RCRC deems appropriate in a given situation. Functions performed on that basis may include a variety of functions, such as the establishment of protecting zones for endangered civilians, acting as a mediator between belligerent parties, or visiting persons deprived of their liberty in non-international armed conflicts. Finally, the RCRC may perform functions assigned to the protecting powers as a substitute of such powers. However, this legal basis has never been formally applied in practice. The RCRC has no interest in acting as a substitute of the protecting powers because it can fulfill most of the functions assigned to those powers in its own rights without giving the impression that it represents only one state and not 
all the victims. In practice, the RCRC has performed many tasks that IHL intended to be carried out by the protecting powers. <laughs>